Well, good morning, my dear Westsiders. So good to see you all here today. I wasn't sure anyone would turn out for a service centered around the worst reflection ever. It shows, I think, your courage to come here on Sundays, no matter what. And I trust you will continue to do that in the future. To show up, no matter what. Well, we have finally come to the point where we must say goodbye to one another. It has been over three months since I announced I would be departing from Westside. On July 21st, I told you all that my talented wife, Gail, had been recruited out of her job here in Fort Worth with one in Chicago. That it was a job offer too good for us to refuse, and that, though a very difficult decision, she and I had decided to take a risk unlike any we had ever performed. As most of you know, Gail and I have bought a little condo just north of the city in a place called Highland Park. It is known to be a democratic stronghold in a democratic state. <laughs> a significant Jewish population. There are five synagogues in this village of less than 30,000 people. One Hasidic, one conservative, two reform, and one humanistic. You cannot dine at the best Mexican food place in the village on Friday nights. It is called Casa de Isaac and Moisha. <laughs> that despite what we may have heard, temperatures never got above 80 degrees and never below 60. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it there. <laughs> and it is just about time for me to leave and go to this new place. Immediately following this service after hugs and kisses and shakings of hands, I will drop Gail off at the airport and I will make my way to Memphis, where I will sleep and then tomorrow drive the rest of the way to my new home. I thought a lot about what I would say today and was reminded of a story about a more traditional kind of church where the minister had been there for 30 years. Everyone loved him dearly. But all believed it was time for him to move on. One Sunday he announced that he had received a call from another church. And he believed this call was from the Lord. So he was going to leave. But before he could say anything else, the music director jumped up and announced, We will all now sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs> See, I think that that's my last real joke here. <laughs> The minister thought he was called by Jesus to go to this other church, and they wanted him to leave, and they said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Like, Jesus did them a favor. Okay. I always wanted to leave Westside before people started wishing I would. I think I've accomplished that. Although, you all know, I didn't think it would be this soon. Our response to reading talks about turning. About the necessity sometimes to begin anew, to start fresh. To refuse to be trapped in yesterday's ways. And that is what I'm about to do. But that, my dear friends, is not what I believe Westside is about to do. Not just yet. While all will be well eventually, it will take a bit of time to get there. Now this sort of thinking, of course, could lead to no other place than to that fabulous television series, Magnum P.I. 
most of you are familiar, or at least somewhat familiar, with the program to which I'm referring. It took place in Hawaii, almost all of it on the island of Oahu. It starred Tom Selleck as the private investigator, Thomas Magnum, who lived rent-free on an ocean residence of a well-to-do author, and he famously drove a red Ferrari around the island. Magnum and his buddies, Rick and TC, were together in, Vietnam, in the Vietnam War, and they all found themselves on the island solving crimes. I probably know way too much about Magnum P.I. <laughs> For instance, Tom Selleck was cast as the original Indiana Jones, a role that eventually went to Harrison Ford. Selleck's career would likely have been much different if Universal Studios would have allowed him to shoot the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Another piece of trivia I know is that there was a great deal of doubt whether the series would return for its eighth season. Negotiations with Selleck were not going well. He believed the series had run its course. But the studio, the same one that would not allow him to play Indiana Jones, was now pleading with him for one more season. At the conclusion of season seven, Thomas Magnum was unconscious in a hospital bed, hooked up to a machine to keep him alive after being seriously wounded in a gunfight. The last scene showed Magnum walking among the clouds, wondering what was going on, happy but confused. When that scene was filmed, it was still not known if Magnum P.I. was going to return to television the next season. Now, the title of this season-ending episode was Limbo. Not as in that place somewhere between heaven and hell, believed to be real by some Roman Catholics, though no longer part of official doctrine, but instead a feeling or place of intermediate transition, or a sort of midway state that can seem like an imprisonment. It is a place where you do not know what is coming next, a place of suspension, a place that sort of keeps you hobbled and in a state of not knowing. And all of this is to say in this worst reflection ever. <laughs> I believe that is the state Westside is in right now, a state of limbo, a state of not knowing what the future holds. And I also know Limbo is not a comfortable place to be. We want answers. We want to know what is coming our way. We want to know that everything will turn out all right. And we would rather know those things sooner rather than later. Well, unfortunately, we cannot know the answers today. But I would like to suggest some things, some things that may help Westside get where she wants to be, out of a state of limbo and into a state of relative stability. I've suggested some of these things before at other times, but we'll do so again today, and then you'll not have to hear me say these things ever again. My first suggestion is to be kind to the poor. They will do their honest best to lead this church. I personally have a great deal of faith in them, and I know they want what is best for Westside. But I think the entire board would agree with me with the hope that you will be especially kind to the board president, Linda Nice. I think she is working harder than any other president with whom I've served, and that's saying a lot. She would have worked hard anyway, but the circumstances surrounding my departure has increased the workload dramatically. Please trust her. Please allow her to lead. Please give her the benefit of the doubt. But most of all, please give her space. 
I do not believe any sane person would want to be in her shoes at this moment. I would also ask you to be kind to one another. While in this state of limbo, it might become easier to say things under the pressure of the time. It might be easier to step around or over others when things don't seem to be going your way. And it might be easier to dismiss ideas and opinions that differ from your own simply because everything is uncertain and because everything seems to be more important right now. Take a breath. Realize everyone here wants what is best. And maybe, just maybe, have the humility to realize that everyone, even the person with whom you disagree, is doing the best she or he possibly can under the circumstances. Be patient with one another. But mostly, please be kind. And lastly, I ask that you be in this for the long haul. You may not know this, but the Pulitzer Prize winning Carl Sandburg, who wrote about Lincoln and wrote about Chicago in his poetry, was a universalist. He even went to Lombard College, a universalist institution of higher education. One of our own said these words. He said, you can't go tramping around from church to church to fulfill your obligations. You've got to settle on one church and throw your life into it and build it up. Who would want to go to a picnic all the time and eat out of other people's baskets? It is our obligation as members of one liberal church to give ourselves to it. So throw yourself into the well-being of Westside. Feel the importance of this place. Offer her your loyalty and be in it for the long haul. Now finally, I'm not going to thank individuals today. I would inevitably leave somebody out, and that would, I think, be tragic on this occasion. So. The final thing I want to say to you all, as we say goodbye to one another, is thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be the minister here. Thank you for choosing me to serve in this capacity. Thank you for trusting me, a trust that has allowed me to grow in ways I didn't know possible which has helped me become the human being I am today. Someone who I know without a doubt is a better human being than he was prior to this ministry. You have helped shape me. You have helped refine me. contributed greatly to my well-being. We have done many wonderful things here together. And I believe if you were kind, if you were loyal, Westside will continue well, to be well, to be that beacon which is needed here in Fort Worth far more than in other places like Chicago. To be kind, to be loyal, that, my friends, would be the greatest of gifts.